Kamoi! Wo kann BDU absetzen? Position AL 8532. Alle Maschinen ausgefallen. Manövrieren fähig. Erwarten Hilfe. The Enigma came to be in the German Navy after World War I, when a German codebook during the war had been captured by the Russians, who gave it to the British, who used it to, in effect, bottle up the German Navy in the North Sea so that they couldn't come out and win the war in an afternoon with a battle. So as a consequence of the revelations that the British were able to do this, the Germans created a new machine called the Enigma, the purpose of which was even if being captured, you wouldn't be able to solve messages in that. However, if it were captured, it would often, in very many cases, help the Allies solve messages enciphered in it. Board that U-boat is this. Typewriter. An Enigma code machine. It allows the German Navy to communicate with its submarines in secret. And our inability to decipher their messages is costing us this war. There was a considerable difference between the old-fashioned code books, which were like dictionaries, and the Enigma machine. With the old code books, this was like reconstructing a language. And the guys you needed to do this work were mainly classical scholars, guys who knew Latin, Greek, Egyptian, things like that. Whereas with the new systems, these were primarily mathematical, and you needed mathematicians. The old systems used books, and you needed language experts. With these, you needed mathematicians who knew statistics and matters like that. And that was basically the difference between the older systems of World War I and the newer systems of World War II. The Enigma machine had as, it, as its heart a wired rotor. Imagine a hockey puck, 26 electrical contacts on one side, 26 on the other. These are wired at random, one to another. You shoot an electrical current in at A, it comes out at X. You, the rotor turns one place, A again. This time it's Q. Well, that would be kind of a simple system with only 26 different possibilities. If, however, you lined up three rotors, one after another, so that when one completed a revolution, the other one turned, you had a much more complicated cipher. And that basically is the way the Enigma cipher machine worked. Hirsch, I think we got the code wrong! Andy, that ink's running. Try it. With cipher machines, it's not always the system that matters, it's how it was used. You have to have one enigma to put the messages into code and another enigma at the other end to take the messages out of code. So it was always a two-way device. Unlike the Air Force enigma, which had its rotors set at the whim of the uh, Air Force men who were radioing the messages, and these guys would use dirty words, girlfriends' names and all of that, the naval enigma was set up on a random basis according to rules set down by the Navy. So particular messages had to set up in a particular way, and these were always random settings of the code wheel. This made it much more difficult to break, and it wasn't possible to crack that without capturing some documents, either from U-boats or from other ships that were uh, attacked by the Royal Navy and captured. The first seizure of a device from the Enigma, basically the heart of the Enigma, the rotors, were captured in February of 1940 when a U-boat, the U-33, was sunk off Scotland, off the Firth of Clyde, and some of the U-boat men came to the surface. They had survived and were floating in the water. They had been told, one of them, to take the Enigma rotors out of the machine in case the, the machine had been salvaged and drop them overboard, but he forgot to do it. And when these men were captured, this man still had the Enigma rotors in his pocket. And when the British came over to them to find out what was going on, he said, oh my God, I forgot to do it. And he went over to his pants and squeezed the pants to see if the Enigma rotors had been taken out. The pants were empty. The British had taken these Enigma rotors. And that was kind of the first break that the British had into the naval Enigma rotor machine. This man 
have seen and heard things that must not be revealed to the enemy. Our secrets, such as our radar capabilities and our, and our understanding of German encryption. If we fall into German hands alive, we will be tortured without mercy. Either you succeed in sinking that ship, or you must see to it that none of us survive to be captured. Up until the time that they captured these machines, you will see that the times of solution are 48 hours, 72 hours, 84 hours, incredible lengths of time. The minute one of these messages are solved, after these new code books came into effect, the solution time drops to four hours. So they were reading them almost as quickly as the Germans themselves. The solutions of the Enigma greatly facilitated the Allied prosecution of the war. It enabled the Allies to more effectively divert their convoys around the wolf packs. It enabled later in the war for the Allies to attack the submarines. But it can't be said, as some writers say, that code breaking won the war. That can't be true. The war at sea was won by the guys who were sailing the ships, the guys who were fighting the U-boats, the, ship, the shipyard makers in the United States who were building more ships than the Germans could ever sink. These were the guys who won the war. But code breaking did help. What code breaking did do was shorten the war and save lives. So there were very many people who are alive today who might not have been alive but for code breaking. Thank you.